Hi guys and welcome to this video on the new moon in Pisces that happens on the 13th of March 2021. Thanks for joining me. It's a pleasure to be with you today. This new moon happens at 20 minutes past 10 in the morning and that's based on UK time. The chart you can see next to me here is a snapshot of the sky at the moment this new moon happens. I'm going to analyze that to see what energy the planets bring up and how they interact with one another. And um, don't get too hung up on the times though. Uh, this process is gradual. I would say you'll feel the energy on the 12th, 13th and 14th. And what I picked up this week during the tarot readings is that a gate opened up. And what I really sensed is that an energy was being pulled in and kind of downloaded and that it's a very loving energy. And that makes a lot of sense with this new moon in Pisces because the new moon is when the sun and the moon, they sit together. The moon goes pitch black, it pulls in energy so that it can start its next cycle and it's a wonderful time to start over to plant these seeds of intention and to say do you know what this is what I want to work on the Sun is your conscious mind it's your energy and what brings you life and the moon is internal it's what makes you feel at home and at peace and when the two sit together they're perfectly aligned so the way you feel internally and the way you appear in the world are perfectly matched and you're really able to affect change there now the there's a couple of things in terms of astrology, astrological jargon here that I want to point out because I noticed these things when I was looking at the chart earlier and the strongest mode is what's called mutable. So a lot of the placements fall in mutable areas here and mutable is about flexibility and adaptability in astrology. So again, you're able to exercise a lot of control and to make internal changes. The two strongest elements are air and water. So air is masculine, water is feminine. We've got perfect balance between yin yang, inner, outer, feeling and doing, being and doing, yeah, um, existing and then taking action based on what your experience is. Air is about the way you think and the way you perceive the world and the way you communicate. So you're really switched on. Your like, critical faculties are really operating full steam. You're able to make good decisions. You feel... Um, like you're getting the gist, you understand things very well, there isn't a lot of room for miscommunication. Water is the way you feel, it's an appreciation for the invisible things in life, for what could be the potential and the best possible version of something. Love, selflessness, the capacity to care for other people and to derive joy and pleasure from all of that. Both of them exist in kind of other realms. I mean, water can be frozen and evaporated, so it's very, very changeable. Air obviously is too. So things can really be rearranged internally, if that makes sense. If you feel like you're a victim of your own personality, and if you are, you'll know what that means. You're not, a, you're not powerless in that. There are things you can reprogram and change about yourself. And days like this are perfect because you're able to do it with love. You can't criticize yourself into being someone else. You can love yourself into growing into the person you want to be. So the sun and the moon are at 23 degrees. Two and three is five in numerology. That's about freedom and broadening the scope of your experience and saying, I am not a victim of my circumstances. I don't have to follow instructions. I can do what I please. I'm a free person. I'm not in prison as it is, so I can go and do and say and be whatever I want to be. If you struggle with that, this is a great day to step into your power and to say, you may not like it, but this is my truth. And I haven't liked it for years and I've struggled with it, but at some point I've just got to be true to myself. Sorry, not sorry. Got to be, be me. Then Pisces is interesting because the way I see Pisces is like two fish looking at each other. And Pisces is, as far as I'm concerned, the most reflective of the signs because it has the greatest appreciation for what could be and what isn't. Or what is in spiritual truth but what isn't on planet Earth. And what you can do to manifest those things into your real truth here in your experience. And to also see the potential in things. And to not be tricked into this false sense of security and absolutism where everything is either black or white. Pisces really has an appreciation that you're not going to be perfect and that it's okay not to be perfect and that you can still work with that. So it's really energizing, it's really loving, it's a homecoming, it's an understanding of self. And with that understanding, you become incredibly empowered, you can make internal changes, and those changes, believe me, will follow in actuality. I really think that the way we see ourselves has a strong influence on our bodies. And if you perceive yourself a certain way, I really think that 
of course, some of it is going to be genetic and the way you're born and what you're predisposed to, but a lot of things are the way you perceive your identity to be. And what I'm saying is that you don't have to kind of roll up your sleeves and get really busy working on things. All you have to do is feel the love for yourself. Let that kind of sway you in the right direction of the, why don't you try this? It's almost like the universe is downloading stuff and in those downloads are certain suggestions, gentle nudges from the universe that say, if you try this, you may get a different outcome. Why don't you be willing to do that? Just be willing. Neptune is next to this new moon, three degrees away from it. Three is communication and the way you think in numerology. Neptune is the water planet of dreams and intuition and love. On a global level, it's the outer planet of love. Venus is the personal planet of love. Neptune is in the sign of rules. Pisces are so very happy. 20 degrees, one and two is a relationship. Very happy. So the vibration is right, the sign is right. And Neptune then sits on this new moon, which is pitch black. And the image I'm getting is a big black ocean of infinite possibilities that can feel quite scary, but is exciting. Then we've got, so if you're a creative type, if you're um, intuitive, ooh, your, your powers are really just revved up. If you're someone who takes care of other people, either in your work or as a parent, you just will want to make them, like if you, if you, <laughs> if you, I don't know, cook a meal, you'll want to put the little sprig of parsley on that just to make it visually pleasing, to just make, elevate the whole thing even more. So it's just doing your best to share your love with other people. We've also got Venus at 19 degrees in Pisces. One and nine is 10, that reduces to one in numerology, and that is uh, like a cardinal mode in astrology. That's pioneering spirit energy saying, I'm going to take it upon myself to do this. In Pisces, it looks for the essence of love. It looks for um, where love resides now. And love, it's so interesting that I always speak about love and I mean, you could argue from an outsider's perspective, it's like, okay, Greg, what do you know about love? Um, I do know about love. I've been in an eight year relationship. I've been in love with people. Um, and I, I think the point I'm trying to make is it's not about what you've got to show for it or um, if you've been successful in love or not. It's really something that we all have access to because we're made of it. And it's something that we can feel whether, whether we're in a relationship with another person or not. Because you'll have a loving relationship with yourself and you really, if you don't have a loving relationship with yourself, then that's something that ought to become a priority because it's going to be the most important relationship you ever have. You might as well make it a good one. Um, and then second, the relationship you have with the universe, which loves you unconditionally. You're here for a reason. You've been created in love. So it's something that you, 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 it, it's just part of your makeup. It's like a, a, a gene in your DNA and your chromosomes. It's just something that's there. And because the sun and the moon and Neptune and Venus line up like this perfectly in Pisces, it's really an opportunity not only to see the best in yourself and the potential, but to use these spiritual downloads to finally, finally, finally forgive yourself for this dreadful thing that you've done. And if that's the reason and the cause for your um, negative relationship that you've got with yourself, then forgive yourself for that, please, today, and say, I'm going to accept you as you are. So part of it is we influence our bodies and the way we appear in the world, right? But the things we usually struggle with are the things that feel kind of destined, the things that are out of our control, the, the things that make us a certain way. And if you can't change it, and if you've been tortured about it for year, years, then isn't it time to maybe just embrace it and to say, okay, this isn't my favorite thing, but it's part of me. I'm just going to accept it. And that's the end of it. It sounds simple. It isn't. And it's the most powerful thing that you can do because forgiveness, love, uh, forgiveness move, removes the barrier and it lets love back in. So we've got those um, sitting together here. Then we've got um, series next to the sun on in the other house you can see there's a line between them and um series is in aries it's at seven degrees in another house so it's 14 degrees away from the sun because each house has 30 degrees quick <laughs> god 
Matt's lesson as if. I'm really not qualified about Matt's lessons. Love, maybe. Matt's no. Um, so yeah, each house has 30 degrees, 23 degrees, there's seven left, right? And then seven in the other house, that's 14 degrees. So it's not technically conjunct because the orb is 10 degrees, but I want to look at it because I'm interested. Ceres is the cornucopia of wealth and abundance and it's seven degrees in Aries. It's kind of counterculture energy to the new moon energy because it says, get creative with what you're doing and don't, um, don't be so morally, uh, what's the word? Rigid. <laughs> so Ceres is trying to misguide you, okay? It's saying cut corners and just, uh, you know, fudge this and kind of take a shortcut there. You'll be all right. Chiron sits next to it at seven degrees in Aries as well. And it says, do you know what? Don't bother with all this introspection and like internally shifting things so that you can become a better person <laughs> like it doesn't care about that this is your ego speaking okay it says go out and have fun and get creative with the truth and just do whatever you want and get what you want out of the day that's the best way forward it isn't the best way forward is to do the inner work because that will um result in long-term permanent changes in you as a person and in your life as a result because you'll manifest different things vibrating at a different frequency if you go for the quick fix today and you're like okay enough i'm going to the casino and i'm going to have a big thrill there and then i'm going to i don't know buy myself something expensive and then do my hair whatever like or have an affair just because i can it's your ego is really threatened by this because it is such a big download. The ego doesn't want you to succeed in life, right? You can call it the ego or Satan or the... What is it? They even talk about this on TV. Um, I saw it the other day. What was it? The saboteur? The internal saboteur. That's it. So there's lots of things, um, you know, lots of demons, whatever. Lots of words for it, but it's ultimately the same principle. The, the sense we all have that there's a part of us that really doesn't want us to succeed and that kind of works against us. And that's really all I talk about when I mention the ego. It's just a, I think it's a pretty neutral way of labeling it. And that wants you... Um, to stay the same, not to have any personal growth, and it wants you to miss this opportunity by um, instant gratification on this day. So you get yours all the time, immediately, now, yesterday, a moment ago, please, thank you very much. Black Moon Lilith is further away, that's at 15 degrees in Taurus, and that is similar in the way that it says that, you know what, there are lots of practical opportunities here today. Stop daydreaming, stop faffing around, get on with work and just do it. So the ego almost takes on the voice of a scolding parent that calls you lazy and says, get back to work, you daydreamer. And we all know that voice, right? Because the, the, the people at school all have that voice. And some of our parents had that voice. And it just, it just a, it's just a trope that we've all heard before. We've all got hours of that voice in our heads. So a lot of us are going to, um, because it's so familiar, are going to be tempted to respond and to say, okay, I won't think funny things about me and what I could be. And I'll just accept the fact that I have to be in this misery and I have to do my job and I won't have any feelings or emotions or thoughts or create if it, uh, you know, I'm just going to roll over and just lie down basically. That's what the ego wants you to do. You're not going to do that because um, you wouldn't be watching this video if you were just like, well, it's all over. Why bother? You know? <laughs> okay. Next we've got, what's next? Yes. So in terms of conjunctions, we've got um, the new moon conjuncting Neptune and Venus officially. The other things that I've talked about, they're not conjunct. Okay. I've just talked about those. But let's look at some of the aspects. First of all, we have got... Let me have a look. We have got a, uh, what is this? We've got a sextile to Pluto in Capricorn at 26 degrees. Okay, so owning your truth can have unforeseen effects. If you, if you state your truth, other people may not like it. And it may have a dramatic effect in your placement in a group or institution or social setting. And you may get some conflict there, some major friction. 
Oh, you know what this reminds me of is the, um, and I don't want to get into it, um, the Hagen, uh, not the Hagen, the, although that's a good name for them, the Megan and Harry interview that was on Oprah. On one level, wow, so brave to speak your truth. On another level, wow, really risky. And um, that's an example of someone who is speaking something that they feel is um, important and that's part of their experience. But the, 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 the truth is going to have real consequences. Whether, yeah, it's going to have consequences whichever way it goes. Either, you know, they all, um, which is unlikely, because I didn't find it very constructive. In, in the sense that it's not going to bring people together. But, you know, a miracle could happen and it's like, oh, we didn't realize you were so upset, let's have a phone call and let's make friends and be together. But usually when you criticize people like that, especially publicly, then it, it creates a division and a rift. And it's like, okay, well, that's your truth. We, you know, there's nothing wrong with speaking your truth. But certainly this has made us look bad if it's, if it's true or not true. I mean, I don't know. Um, but ultimately, Speaking your truth is going to have the effect on some people that, okay, well, that's your truth. I want nothing to do with your truth because it puts me down or it's an insult or I just don't like your perception or I just don't agree with your truth. So if you, um, and that's a sign of growth, to be honest, like as soon as you do something and someone criticizes you, you know, it's worth doing because it's, it's, it's created a response. If everyone likes what you do, and I mean, this is a cliche, but if you have no enemies and if, if, if no one has any negative thing to say about what you're doing, then you're not really making a big impact because as soon as you make an impact, someone's going to disagree. So if you see that today, if someone's like, oh, how awful, you actually celebrate the fact that you're, I don't know, a redhead or something like that, like something you can't do anything about, something that's just you, you know? then that's a good sign that you're really stepping into your truth because someone disagreeing with it or being like, okay, well, you can't be part of our team anymore. You can't sit with us anymore. You know, like the mean girls, then that's a good sign because you're make you're taking steps forward, becoming more yourself. Okay. <laughs> Getting carried away here. Then we've got um, a square between the new moon in Pisces and Neptune and Venus and the south node in Sagittarius at 15 degrees. So it's kind of like a sense of world weariness. It's like, do you know what? I have been walking this journey for a while now. And sooner or later, I'm going to have to make a decision about, well, first of all, I've been walking this journey for a while now, which means that I've got to know who's on this journey with me, myself and the people around me and how that suits me or not. You get a feel for it. You know, once you've been alive for a few years, I mean, even at 10, you kind of know who you get on with and who you don't get on with. Um, and that experience becomes really clear and you're able to make sense of it. That's the thing. You've got information that you can actually do something with, like it makes sense to you. And with that understanding of what works for you and what doesn't work for you and how you torture yourself, there's a moment of, I'm calling an internal truce. It is not fair to me to beat myself up about things I cannot control. And what are my options? I mean, with the ginger hair thing, I can dye my hair. Um, I can realize that it's, it's who I am, or I can just continue to berate, my, um, berate myself over it. So, I mean, the healthiest thing to do is to just accept the way it is and then to realize that other people actually find that incredibly beautiful and maybe they can teach you something about the way you look. It's that kind of energy. So you're not under any risk of having the wall pulled over your eyes because of all the air in the chart, the mutable energy, which puts the ball firmly in your courts in the sense of I control what I think and feel and what happens here. That's not even a question, it just is. And then also this experience, I've been alive, I wasn't born yesterday, and if you disapprove of me, then that's your stuff, not mine. So there's a real liberation and a real distinction between what is your problem in your business and what no longer is your problem in your business. And if that's not liberating, I don't know what is. Then we've got a connection between um, the new moon and Saturn and Jupiter in Aquarius. 
that is the great conjunction and they're exactly 10 degrees away so we're coming to the end of this great conjunction that's been there since december and it's really um new hope for the future social responsibility science invention humanitarianism teaching education broadening your horizons jupiter is good luck and good fortune saturn is the rules and in this case i really see that as like a a bridge connecting you from the place you've been at now and the place you want to go and the bridge is practical steps and ideas and clear thoughts that say do a b and c to actually get there so the world is kind of saying there are places and institutions waiting for you to open you with open to welcome you with open arms like the red hair once you accept it and you realize that that's who you are and then you open yourself up to it you realize there's a whole world of people out there who adore people with red hair for example it's the same thing once you um stop wriggling and accept who you are on this day you immediately get presented with groups of people or places for you to go that will welcome you in this new identity uh, that sounds very complicated i don't know like let's say you've gone to a you've been going to a spiritual development group because you've always had that inkling that you're intuitive but your family were very religious and they say you can't do that so you left it for a while you're now doing it uh, you go on this day and you meet someone who's really like-minded and who needs someone to work with them and it's through something you discovered about yourself and then did something about it the universe meets you halfway and offers you other opportunities that lead to things you could have never planned for and that's the good luck and the structure of jupiter and saturn supporting that wow These aren't um, interacting with the moon. They're sitting on the midheaven, which is the arrow pointing. Um, you can see the chart there. It's the arrow pointing either that way or this way at the top of the chart at 24 degrees. Mercury is a communication planet at 26 degrees in Aquarius. Your ability to articulate exactly what you're thinking and feeling is unequaled. So if someone doesn't get you and you have the patience to explain it, which I wouldn't recommend, just do your business and go about what you're doing. Don't try and explain yourself too much. I really feel, well, you've got to get, get people are mind readers. You've got to give people a chance. But often I found that people who just don't get you at all and where you have to do a lot of explaining, it usually signals a kind of gap between the two of you that's really far apart and most of the people you get on with i mean this is for me it might be different for you there isn't a lot of explanation involved you either have chemistry and you click or you don't so um what's that good for it's good for describing yourself so cvs presenting yourself to strangers putting your best foot forward being able to speak very well and palace athena is at one degree in pisces so that wow that's almost like another download it's like your ability to communicate isn't just about expressing what you're thinking about it's having that receptor it's like having a satellite dish floating around your head enabling you to connect with these spiritual downloads that are coming in which bring in all this accepting loving energy which are going to help you understand who you are make sense of it break it down and then come up with solutions wow so you're like a supercomputer on this day a very feeling decisive supercomputer um what have we got next we've got a um sextile between the new moon in pisces and saturn in aquarius so i've spoken about saturn in aquarius but um the information that comes in isn't vague and and rubbishy it's really practical and concrete and it will give you real steps to say i can do these things to alter my experience on planet earth and the other sextile is with mars at five degrees in gemini and that is your innate desire to be free and to live a life that is free and that's based on your decisions and your needs and whether you're an assertive person or not it really does not matter at the end of the day we all have some sort of an inkling of the kind of life we'd want to live and whether that is 
approved of by other people around you or not is a huge stumbling block because until we become assertive and the confidence to be ourselves we're going to say well i can't do that because my family would disown me or my my partner would disapprove or whatever it is so it's the chance to live an authentic life. Not everyone wants to live an authentic life. Some people just want to do well financially and have a nice easy time. It depends on where you are. But I really, again, think that if you're watching this video, you're not interested in having like a superficial life that doesn't give you any answers. You're interested in really putting your own stamp on your experience. And this is a fabulous opportunity to do that. Mars is like the god of war. Well, not like, he is the god of war in, in mythology. So it's really, where's the fight? And the fight is in Gemini at five degrees. So it's my freedom to think and feel what I want to feel and to go wherever I want. <gasps> On the ascendant, do you see that X-Men symbol? It's called the part of fortune. It's a 29 degrees in Gemini. 29 is 11. And the Gemini symbol is um, a Roman numeral two, another 11. That's like the four of wands in the tarot, 11, 11. It's a doorway and it's sitting on the ascendant, the true nature of what this is. And the information comes through. It's really an inward download that fires you up. It makes you ambitious. Oh, and the ambition, remember, it's more important to do the inner work and to focus on what you want rather than to write a funny article that everyone's going to laugh at in the short term and you'll get a buzz out of the laughs. It's a private kind of process. So if you find yourself giving your power to other people and say, oh, I just want to, you know, impress them or I want to be loved or I want to take care of, it's, you're really deflecting from yourself a little bit. You need to take yourself seriously. Um, what else have we got? We've got... Uh, as uh, a quincux between the south node in Sagittarius, that green line going all the way across, and Black Moon Lilith in Taurus. So your experience really beats your ego on this day. So your sense of, I don't need to believe this story, I've heard it five times and I'm not going to fall for it again. It's that vibe. It's not that you're world weary, but you're experienced and all of your experience is right there and accessible. It's not like a blind spot when you have all this experience, but in the moment you forget about it and you just fall over again you experience everything um, you remember it and that's why other people's opinions you really need to look out for if anything disapproval is a good sign and being completely selfless and completely focused on other people and giving yourself all day long is not a good sign okay so try and find a, a, a comfortable place there to operate from Uranus at 8 degrees in Taurus. That connects with Saturn as well. So yeah, these, these truths that, about yourself that you accept are so powerful that they will change the fabric of your life. They will change the landscape of your future. Because you're becoming a different person. A more authentic person and you're no longer at war with yourself. I don't see... I know the new moon is a temporary phenomenon. You know, it happens on the 13th of March. But there are certain opportunities in life when you make the most of it. It's a long, it's a lifelong change that you affect. And we don't get these kind of gates opening. I really need to do some research into this because I've been doing tarot readings for years and there have been three or four instances over the years when I've had these gates opening. And you know, like in popular culture, we've got things like the lion's gates opening on the 8th of the 8th, like in August. And there are certain things in the year. Um, but energetically, I just feel them sometimes. And with this one, I really don't feel that it's like, well, it could be like, and it sounds ridiculous, but it could be extraterrestrial. But I really think that it's an energy that stems from elsewhere that's coming down here, that's influencing us on this day during this time period. And that's why it's a temporary opportunity that we should use. And even though we don't know the source of it, the energy is love. So... I wouldn't look a gift horse in the mouth. It's my thing. I mean, it, it, who's going to say no to love? And really, the outcome could create division. So loving yourself more on this day could mean that other people love you less because they disapprove of who you're becoming or what you're saying. 
And that's why, again, you can only see that as, wow, someone who really loves me surely would celebrate the fact that I'm becoming more confident and more me. The fact that they're now repelled by the real me, is that a relationship I want to continue investing in? It's a rhetorical question, the answer is no. <laughs> okay. So, um, that is your chart for the new moon in Pisces. Have I looked at everything? I think I have. You'll also notice that all of the things pretty much except the south node are in the top half of the chart, right? There's a line in the middle, a um, horizontal line cutting the chart in half and everything's on the top half. Don't give too much weight to that because if you're in the States or if you're looking at this in Dubai or Australia or even like an hour or two earlier or later, because it's gradual, remember? If you look at it with those things I just mentioned in place, the, the, the houses are going to be different. So that's why in these readings, I don't look at the houses too much. If this was a natal chart and your birth chart had most of the planets in the top half like this, I would say, wow, your focus is really on the public sphere of life rather than the domestic. You're really focused on your relationships with people in an institutional setting and you're also looking at institutions themselves and how to transcend those institutions and to become the person you want to be. If everything was in the bottom half, I would say, okay, the identity is really important in personal life. So that's kind of, um, I don't know, just a bit of extra info for you to be aware of in terms of, if you're interested in astrology, that is, I've always just, okay. So that's the chart. I think that's all I've got to say. I think. Have I missed anything? There's a little triangle with the two sextiles and the, and the trine. In astrology, they don't really give that a name because trines and sextiles aren't said to have as much friction as squares and they're said to be more important. Um, um, I look at this usually and I call it a triangle of harmony. Ah, peace, love. So it's the north node with Saturn and then that new moon. So the confidence in yourself and the self-belief and the entitlement to your own freedom opens a door. Wow, another door. So the love is coming in through that doorway. Once you receive it, embrace it, then it gives you the fuel to move out of that doorway into your new future. So if you, uh, you may think, oh, Greg, you know, he says every week is important or whatever. I, I don't. I look at the energy and I say, this is what's highlighted and what you can work with. But this week, I really have to say, it's so important for anyone who is dissatisfied with themselves. And you're really able to accept yourself in a loving way. And that is the only way really to accept yourself. Like I said, you can't bulldoze yourself into loving yourself. It just allows for you to overcome the shyness and to embrace yourself and to really, really, really change. And real change is rare. I re when I first got into recovery, I remember I was at my first meeting at 18 and I remember saying, I just want to be happy. <laughs> and then 10 years later, it was like, I just want to change or I'm just willing to change. And even when the words came out of my mouth, I don't think I was. It, t it took me blood and guts to change. It was really brutal. And yeah. And that's why people, I, I think that no one wants to go through that. That's why change is so rare. Because if you have the option of just plodding along or going through torture to change as a human being, no one's going to change, no one's going to choose the torture. And the gift of this day is that you can really change without the self-flagellation through love and change the way we should change, really, in an ideal setting. So it's a fabulous opportunity. Sensational. I love it. Okay. Have a wonderful new moon in Pisces. If you'd like a personal reading with me, please get in touch via my website. It's gregoryscott.com. On the front page, click on book your reading to order your reading with me. I use astrology, tarot, and numerology in my personal readings, and I combine them the way I did the numbers and the, the um, planets and signs there. I can look at your life purpose, um, your career options, whether they're one and the same or different. 
um, education, travel, relationships, money, spirituality, family, anything you may be questioning. So if you do, if you would like a personal reading with me, then do get in touch via the website gregoryscott.com. If you like this video, then please give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe and share the video online. Have a fabulous new moon and I'll speak to you soon.